friends. It is Ask a Flower Farmer Wednesday with your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler. And um, as you can see and probably hear, <laughs> more construction here, y'all. I am here on the farm. And before we jump into our Ask a Flower Farmer, me answering your questions, I just wanted to show you a couple things. Look, y'all, we still have sunflowers coming out of the field. This is the Pro Cut Mix. We actually mix this seed um on our farm on on our store we do it in house um it has all 13 of the pro cut colors totally love it. i mean who wouldn't love to have this in fall to sell y'all um and this i was going to show you there was one in particular this is really my favorite size it's about the size of the palm of my hand um, super useful and there's some oranges so those are pro cuts um, and I'm showing you this because I want to talk just a minute before we get started about you know we've heard you know for over 10 years now from people that never get around to planting their cool flowers you know that's what February and March we are bombarded with people saying what do I do I didn't plant cool flowers well so people are still struggling with that you know the biggest season of the year is spring the easiest sell, the most sell, you can never have enough flowers and you can't let it slip past you. The only second season to spring is fall, y'all. And instead of us doing all these unnecessary things during summer, when sales may or may not, depending on where you are, be stale, you should be planting for fall harvest. So this is one of them. You know, you should have a ton of sunflowers every single week during the fall. And look what else I have. Stand by, y'all. I'm getting it. I went out and cut this morning. Um, so I have these to show you guys, but they aren't very well organized yet. So, you know, we, we cut now for the big show we do on Friday. Look at these straw flowers. I mean... These are amazing. I cut the heck out of these last week. Um, but who wouldn't want these, right? Long lasting, they end up drying um, straw flowers. So just planting some seed, y'all, and look at this. Everybody wants to grow Cosmos, but they grow them during the summer where they're a little stressed and they're pretty, but they don't last as long. Fall harvested Cosmos just last longer. And those that are conducive to the colors of fall, this is Rubenza. And let me get rid of these extra ones I have around him. Rubenza is undoubtedly my most favorite Cosmo because I don't know if you can tell, it blooms this deep cranberry, but then it fades. See this faded one right here? It fades like a pair of stonewashed blue jeans. This is one of the longest lasting Cosmos um, that I grow. And I think it's basically because I grow more of this in the fall and the fall conditions are just easier. And these of course are not the harvest stage. This is how they should look in the vase to whoever you're selling those to, right? So that is Rubenza. And then another really long lasting um, Cosmo. This is Fizzy. Fizzy has multiple petals. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff we talk about on Fridays, y'all, why you just really have to um, join us there. But what could, the conclusion I've come to with Cosmos is A, they perform best in the fall because they like short days. It's cooler. It makes them last longer. And the doubles, those that the Rubenza ages beautifully. Then those that actually have double petals, like double click and fizzy white, just have more substance and they just tend to last longer. So I just thought I wanted to share those with you guys since I happen to be on the farm today. So this is Ask a Flower Farmer. And what that means is that you can post any question you may have um, about cut flower growing, you know, seed start and cool flowers, um, harvesting, conditioning, whatever you got, flower farming business, just post it down below in the bubble with the question mark, and I will do my best to answer as many as possible. Um, and so while y'all are getting your cool flower questions and stuff posted down there, or any question you might have related to growing cut flowers, 
Um, so that is my cool flower garden that's out there behind us. Um, and we've done something different this year. It really turns out, y'all, I'm not a purist in anything that I do. It's like I do whatever is the most efficient, most most efficient way to do it, plus cost effective that produces the best end result, right? So normally in the fall, we are all about leaves. Well, the leaves haven't even barely started to fall here yet, right? Um, so leaves are not an option for mulching right now. However, we had to have a, a huge 100-foot gum tree cut down because lightning struck it and killed it. And I had them leave the chips here. And so we've got all these shredded wood trips from my tree that's been planted here. It was actually planted like 120 years ago. Um, and anyhow, we mulched the cool flower garden with those chips. And of course, I have, I have labor too. I have Andrew that comes to the farm. He works at the warehouse in the fulfillment. Sorry, y'all. Um, if I lose you, I'll be right back. Let me turn this off, right? Um, so it won't, I can't turn the alarm off. It was delayed apparently. Anyway, if it goes off, that's why I go pause for a minute. Sorry. Um, so Andrew, who works at the Fulfillment Center, comes here to the farm on Thursday to help me and Bobo. And between me on the tractor with the front end loader and Andrew, he got that entire garden mulched and we are ready to go into winter. I mean, we have to put hoops and row covers and bags down, but we can do that on such a much more um, efficient timeline than we've ever been able to do because of those chips. Because normally we don't want to put row cover and bags in the pathways until they're mulched, right? So we don't have to move them again. Anyhow, um, so, and I just want to plant one other little seed and I don't have any details yet. Y'all know how bad I am about sharing stuff. It looks like we are actually for the first time in five years, um, going to be doing an in-person workshop. Um, it's going to be small, like only 35 seats available. Um, and it'd be here, be, um, close to the farm at the end of the street is where it'll start. And then it'll end up here in the farm and end at the warehouse. Um, and anyway, so if you're not on our email list, you definitely want to get on it. Um, and we'll be announcing that in the coming days. Um, and we're just really excited about it because Cool Flower Garden will be awesome. Um, and just love the thoughts of being with you guys in person and teaching and um, being able to answer your questions. And um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. All right, let's see to these questions here. Why does it say no questions? It said six. Um, there's one. Great, Instagram has such glitches right now, y'all. Um, and it is keeps saying there's um, no questions in the question mark. So I'm gonna look through the comments. So y'all, this week, just post your questions in the comments and I will do my best to fish them out of there, right? All right, so let's see here. And y'all, I also want to say, I see somebody has posted um, twice shy farm, is posting her sunflower emojis, and y'all, that's when people identify themselves as our students, and we absolutely love that. And you know, Dave and I will be live tonight. Today is the last day of the biggest sale of the year on mine and his class, the bundle. Um, and you can comment bundle here and I'll DM you the link straight to the page. You get both mine and Dave's course um, for a thousand bucks, basically, $995. Um, and that's like $150 savings. And don't miss it. It'll pack your winter full of just saving money and making money ideas and guiding you along the way. Um, I recommend that you read my post today that's with the peach um, coxcomb that I'm cutting which is a seed we're growing and that um, it's coming on board. Um, anyway, all right, so here's a question. My cool flower seedlings are direct sown and covered with row covers. The soil surface is starting to get, get green. Moss, should I uncover them to get rid of it? So, um, green growing algae and moss and things is an indication of constant moisture and 
I would say yes. Oh, uh, taking your row cover off and letting it get more fresh air and letting it dry out some. Um, you know, that's one of the benefits of lightweight row cover is you can cover particularly direct seeded stuff to retain moisture and protect your seeds from varmints actually getting them right. Um, and um, if you're having a lot of rain or if your soil doesn't drain very well, which is a big problem with cool season hardy annuals because soil does not dry out going through the winter. And um, so you definitely, yeah, I would definitely uncover them. And so I will say again that all the questions that were in the bubble with the question mark are gone. Um, apparently Instagram is still having um, some problems. And so just keep posting your questions right here in the comments. Harvey fellow, how would you go about marketing a you pick? Um, Harvey, I flower up family farm. I would do the same way I do for every other thing that I market. Um, marketing is basically, um, got the same path. It's just what you actually aim people at might be different. Um, and that is something that I definitely talk about in flower farming school. It is about, you need to have good images, eye catching images, post often and consistently. Um, and people need to understand where, how many times have I seen, for instance, you picks or CSAs or flowers for sale and people don't put their city and state? I mean, I have no idea where you are. I mean, I often hit the, you know, the button of where their page is to go to their page and it's not even on their Facebook page um, or on their Instagram page. That needs to be in every single post, every single post. Um, and that is something that I'm just learning so much more of is that things that we, I talked about this yesterday on the live, things that we have in our head that is everyday information that we don't even think about anymore because we know it. We just assume everybody else knows it. And I am here to tell you, they do not know it. Um, so in every single post about, every time you post about how your flowers are available, you need to add to that post, even just as the last line, and I'm located in X, Y, Z, da, 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 and this is how you get my flowers. Um, because I will tell you that, um, you know, when we were um, gathering flowers for um, the book project, there was three flowers that I had crop failures or they weren't gonna actually bloom in time for the book photo deadline. And, um, so I was buying from a local farmer and I just can't even tell you how hard it was to figure out how to buy flowers. That's why people don't buy our flowers, y'all. You have got to step up your game and become a professional, which is perhaps one of the um, subliminal messages in our online courses. It's like you have to go from, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we hear from florists. It's like, it's too hard. I can't rely on them. They aren't consistent. Um, and the same thing would be for a you pick. Um, so again, just lots of social media action because that's where every, I mean, what is everybody looking at is their darn phone. Um, and given information of how they can, when it's open, how much it costs perhaps, and when they can come, you know, no questions, you know, you just got to be consistent. So I hope that helps. If the cool seed says to start seeds at say 55 to 60 degrees, do you still put them on a heat mat? So you may be talking about sweet peas. Sweet peas are um, the only ones that I am keenly aware that do really well at that low temperature. Um, so we no longer, after working with Bailey of, um, you know, Farmer Bailey plugs and sweet pea seeds, um, ba Bailey germinates his sweet peas in a cold greenhouse in Vermont, right? Um, and so I've done it for the last two years and they're sitting right over there um, outside. They've never been put on heat. They're slower for sure. It takes longer. Um, but yes, we do. That's pretty much the only one that I do not put on heat at all um, are sweet peas. Um, Ami and Dawkus and Dill, all of those umbles, it seems like, um, we put on heat for a short period of time and then just pop it over on a shelf 
with no grow light in a coolish room. Um, the heat kind of wakes them up and says, get busy sprouting. And then following that with not cool, but that's probably going to go off every 10 minutes, y'all. Um, and um, they just germinate. In fact, just this morning, Bobo said to me yesterday, what's wrong with the Ami? Why isn't it popping? I said, Bobo, remember, we put it on the heat and we take it off and I just set it over on a shelf with nothing, water it from time to time, and they start popping. And this morning, the Ami started popping, you know? So anyway, but yeah, that works for sweet peas really well. Uh so Wanda, who is an Alaskan flower farmer, Alaskan peony grower, um, and she's on vacation on the Gulf Shore of Alabama this week because, you know, they're already in deep winter, right? Um, so Wanda, have a great time. Wanda, we always rely on Wanda. She shows up when we're doing our lives, when we're ha offering special promotions on our courses, which Wanda has taken, you can tell from all the sunflower emojis on her comment, she has taken most of our courses, and Wanda's a retired teacher. So it's really a big um, affirmation to us to for her to um, have indulged in our courses and to benefited from them. Um, but Rhonda always chimes in on our lives and says, and remember, if you're starting a business, these online courses are a business expense, and we appreciate it so much. Wanda, I talk about you almost on every live about that, whether you're there or not. All right, Penny asks, how often do you need to water plants that are under frost cloth? 100% depends on what the state of the soil is. I mean, literally, you stick your finger, you uncover them and stick your finger in there. And C, definitely... If you've direct sown and you've row covered to protect the seeds, um, and if it gets like, I mean, we're going in the high 70s and 80s these next few days, um, and if I had row covers down, I would definitely have to take them off. My general rule is that I only put root row covers up now, this time of the year, if I'm trying to protect from varmints. But if the temperature is going above, you know, 55 or 60 degrees during the day, you have to uncover them because it's going to toast them and it's going to really dry them out. And if that is your situation, I would definitely put the row, pull the row cover back and water. I do not water through row cover. That's just too much forceful water at one time. Rain is fine, um, but hose, wand, watering definitely should um, be um, straight on the plants or the seed bed not um, through there. So um, definitely it's different for everybody. So you need to monitor it. You don't want the soil to get bone dry, if that helps. Sunny Sill Flower Farm. What materials do you use for your low tunnels? So we use um, wire pre-arched for hoops. We use Ag-19 row cover and I use sandbags filled with 15 pounds of either sand soil or gravel and you can see all of those on our website thegardenersworkshop.com um, and see what we use and I use the lightweight row cover because it gives me more options I can use that in summer when I use it properly and I can double it in the winter if I ever feel threatened because we really use row cover not for cold protection but for wind and varmint protection from those things. Um, and so I don't want to trap heat and the lightweight allows the most light and water to penetrate it. Um, so that's why I do that. Um, and when you take care of them and use them, um, they will rip if you know you got people manhandling them and dragging them and I see all that happen on my farm too. But I do not rip row covers and I can tell you I can keep them for a couple of years. They are definitely lighter than they were five years ago. Um, but it's still possible because we do it. Muddy muckers, fall planted snaps. They quite a few are six to eight inches tall. We still have 40 plus degree evenings in 50 days. Do I pinch them now or wait till spring? So I actually either pinch um, a couple weeks before we plant them or um, I don't like to pinch fall planted going into winter transplants. Um, so if they will behave, I mean, with those temperatures that you're describing, that's perfect. You're in the perfect scenario. I would actually pinch those in very early spring, not spring. You want to pinch them once they get through winter, but before they start growing again. And for me, 
that's usually during my very early spring window, which is six to eight weeks before your last spring frost. You know, that's why for us, we're still freezing at night, but the afternoons will get warm on sunny days and we'll pull the covers back and start doing a little hand weeding. And in fact, I pinch at that time for anything I want to pinch. You don't want to pinch. Pinching is stressful. And pinching going into winter might be just enough to if there's maybe some that just are not as strong as they should be, that might be enough to maybe like terminate them. Um, so you don't want to do that. And sounds like um, you are in a perfect case. This I think is, that's why we were like working on this in-person workshop because the cool flower garden this fall is going to be really good. All my direct seeded stuff, which there's two beds next to that tunnel um, with all my direct seeded stuff, with the exception of a big bed in the back of the farm. Um, and in I was watering night before last, and I can just see excellent results. And every year, y'all, 20, I mean, actually 28 years I've been direct sowing. And every year I'm <laughs> right because you just think this is the year they're not going to drink my bells of ireland have all popped i'm so happy about that all right mimosa hill farm my farmer bailey plugs arrived today typically i don't harden them off and put row cover on with it being so warm would you harden them off and wait to plant i'm thinking covers is going to be too hot so i think that you're thinking right. Um, so when plugs come to you from a plug supplier, they're coming straight from a greenhouse. They have not been hardened off at all. Um, and that's not usually a problem because I would do exactly what you're mentioning. If it was cool weather, you can use a row cover as that hardening off time, right? You can hoop and row cover after you plant them and that provides the protection that they need. But seedlings do not far better with cool season than they do warm. So I agree with you that I would harden them off um, before you plant them and maybe by the time they're ready, and I don't know what you're talking about, if it's Lizzie or whatever it is, um, but I would probably let them harden off for a couple, a week to 10 days or two weeks maybe, um, and then plant them. Um, and that would be a little, because overheating them, what overheating does, not only does it, you know, stress them, but you don't want these plants to grow so big before they go in winter, so I'd cool them off for sure. I'm in Maryland and planted my cool season plugs with Bio 360 Black Side Up. We're in an unusually warm week with highs near 80 for a week. Should I be concerned about my plugs getting toasted? So you're the same as us. Um, we're calling for the same kind of conditions here, and you can see all of my beds that have transplants in them are covered in the black side up bio 360 and the really the black side up threat is usually the first week they're planted before they're kind of established um, and so I would just be sure that you water provide you know irrigate or hand we hand water this time of the year um, and be sure they're not getting really dried out and I was actually just out there walking around can you you can actually see some green um, like right at the corner of my head that is, which bed is that? That is the fever few. That's the mixed bed that has a bunch of different varieties of stuff in it. Um, and those are super well established. Um, the newer things that Bobo planted just Monday, you know, I, I'm going to look at those a little bit closer, but I think you're fine. And there's really nothing to do, right, to save them. But I think you'll be fine. If I used a floating row cover for my zinnias, which had some powdery mildew, are the row covers contaminated with the spores? Is the row cover safe to use next season on my new seedlings? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, I don't know that the spores could survive there. I know they survive in the soil, but they're a living thing, right? And if like my row covers spend the winter either on cool season hardy annuals out in the freezing weather or in a building, um, I would definitely search engine that. that. Exactly what you just asked me. Can powdery mildew spores survive on, you know, fabric over winter or something like that? And I bet you'll get some kind of answer. All right, and now it says there's and it says there's two questions in the question bubble, 
and I go to it, and it says no questions, and then it gets rid of it. So I'm sorry about that, y'all. Instagram's got some real issues. Um, it makes us crazy with trying to post our posts every day. Um, so friends, I want to remind everybody that tonight I'm going to be at six o'clock. Dave Dowling and I will be on YouTube, um, talking about sharing some student success stories as this is the last night that are, or the last day of the year that our bundle courses are on sale and we're going to be sharing some super sweet, um, student stories. And so these were people that had actually submitted their stories a while back. They've taken both of our courses. They had previously submitted their stories. Well, Jesse reached out to them to get an update on how their business is going. And I can't wait um, to share those with you. And also, um, Lane made us a really great, she does the best PowerPoints. So on the YouTube, um, and you can, you'll be able to see some pictures that we've got of the students. But there's also a picture of me and Dave on there you don't want to miss. I understand. I haven't even seen it myself yet. Um, so I suspect. I know what it is. It's probably from 25 years ago or something. Um, anyway, we'll be on YouTube from 6 to 6.30, and then we'll jump on Instagram at 6.30 or so. But, of course, we can't show you the PowerPoint. But we'll be sharing those success stories because I think, friends, so often we think our circumstances are different or special and that things I'm the first to instantly make a decision about something without I've even without considering it really deeply. And sometimes seeing somebody else doing it, it's like, wait, why didn't I do that? <laughs> you know? And that's what us sharing student success stories does. Hearing where people started from and where how they got through their challenges. Um, and I do want to, again, just encourage you to read that reel that I posted earlier today of that gorgeous peach coxcomb. Um, it's really about our courses and um, just might give you some information and you can comment bundle here or on any of my posts um, on Instagram here and I will DM you the link directly to the page for that special bundle offer um, and you save like 150 bucks you get both mine and Dave's course for $995 that's saving about 150 bucks um, lifetime access to all the resources to the community um, which Dave and I are in our own respective communities and in their swimming if you have questions um, our courses um, are keyword searchable and so we'll be talking about a lot of that tonight and I just encourage you um, you know we aren't born knowing this stuff y'all <laughs> you know and the thing with business particularly today um, is you want to go from starting to success as quick as possible. That's for profit, that's for morale, that's for moving forward, and knowing the steps to go, getting a roadmap is what it's really all about. All right, friends, so I don't see, wait a minute. Here's a question. Do I need to wait to dig up gladiolas after first frost, or can I do that now? We're expecting it a week from now. So, Quince, Blossom Ridge, um, that would be a Dave Dowling question for sure. Um, I don't grow glads. They are like thrift magnets here for us. Um, but I don't grow really any bulb crops other than tuberoses. Um, and so, I can't answer that. Um, and I don't know where you are. If they're, not, they're winter hardy here um, for me. So, um, but that would be something that you would, um, Dave's course, so my course is the basics, annual crops, marketing, and more. Dave's course is bulbs, perennials, and woodies. He is a walking encyclopedia, y'all. So we won't be answering those kind of questions tonight, but when he hosts, if you're not a student, um, the other opportunity is he hosts Ask a Flower Farmer from time to time for me, and you can just watch out for that. But um, sorry, I can't help you there. Um, all right, friends, so I am going, it looks like we are done, and sorry about Instagram's malfunction, um, and I am going to um, go and do a little bit more flower cutting and um, get ready for our show on Friday. So, see you tonight at 6, YouTube, 6.30 here on Instagram, and then Friday, inside my app um, for our show, and we're rolling out some dried flowers, y'all. Uh, we have so many gorgeous dried flowers, um, and we're having a special offer, as always, on um, something. And I'm just, get the app, if you don't already have it, inside the Gardener's. Search your phone's app store for Gardener's Workshop. 
Um, and I hope to see you inside school and on our app on Friday. All right, friends, until we meet again, ciao.